the angels rejoice over the conversion and the repentance of one sinner. And we rejoice today because the movie actor and movie star Shia LaBeouf has announced that he's become a Catholic. In this, in the context of him portraying Padre Pio in a new film coming out. And when I heard, first heard that, I thought, oh, that's kind of a weird casting of Shia as Padre Pio. But then if you look at some of the pictures, here's one. Well, this is an older Padre Pio here in a, in a young man, Shia. But there's another picture in which you can see a resemblance. Let me see if I have it here. Yeah, here we go. There. Yeah, they got the beard, but they kind of have that Italianate uh, features, same hairline, very similar ears. Um, the nose is a little bit different, uh, but you can you can see a resemblance there. You could maybe say that Shia was his nephew. So yeah, it's a it's an amazing thing. It's great, and uh, I followed Shia for a number of years. He's had a, a troubled time. I think we could all agree on that. Uh, difficulties. Uh, I watched a little short uh, biopic on him, and he had a very difficult childhood. Uh, and um, he's certainly talented. We'll talk about some of the films he's been in. Um, so I, I hope that coming to our Lord Jesus, receiving the sacraments, uh, discovering the wealth of our our prayers, our feast days, our devotions will begin to bring the healing that we all need, myself included. So um, reading about this, I first saw it on Fox News, and Bishop Barron is having an interview with Shia. But one of the things that was interesting is he talked about the importance of the Latin Mass on his conversion, Shia, in particular him portraying Padre Pio celebrating the traditional Latin Mass. As you know, Padre Pio died in, I believe it was 1968. So Padre Pio never saw the Novus Ordo. He was celebrating the traditional Latin Mass. So obviously in the film, they've got to do things traditionally. So uh, we'll look at that quote as well. Some of you may not know who Shia is. And I was, um, let's see here. I was looking at his, all the films he's been in. Let's see if this works. There we go. And I realized, you know, there's this, there's this film called Holes. Y'all remember that? And uh, I remember seeing it. I never realized that that was a young Shia. Who else was in this thing? Anyone else? Yeah, John Voight, Shia, Sigourney Weaver. That's right. Sigourney was in it. Um, not recognizing many other names here. But uh, I guess that was one of his very first films. I didn't really know who he was. I wasn't real big. He was in Transformers. That's a big film, but I wasn't really familiar with that. I didn't really notice him until he was in Indiana Jones in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Now, there's four Indiana Jones films. I got to admit, I was not a huge fan of Crystal Skull. I'll tell you straight up, my favorite one of all the Indiana Jones is Last Crusade. Y'all have heard me talk about it before. My favorite scene in Last Crusade is when they're at the crossroads. Sean Connery is the dad. Indiana Jones is the son. And they're debating where they need to go. I think it's Berlin or whatever. And they're back and forth. And then Indiana Jones says, J.C., takes our Lord's name in vain, and Sean Connery, Indian Jones Sr., slaps him in the face and says, that's blasphemy. I love that scene. I love that scene. It's probably what I'd do to one of my sons, actually. Uh, so yeah, that was Indiana Jones. Now, I will say, even though I didn't like that film that much, compared to the original three Indiana Jones, I got to say that one of the best, if not the best part, of Indiana Jones Crystal Skull was Shia. He played the uh, kind of greasy haired, uh, slick back, leather jacket son, long lost son 
of Indiana Jones and he was riding around on a motorcycle and he was cocky. He was kind of everything that Indiana is when he's out um, on his adventures. And I actually thought that was pretty cool. And I think Shia did a great job. That might be, I think, the best best thing Shia has ever done. And uh, I think he nailed it. So I thought that part was pretty cool. So props to him on that. And then the other, I was looking through, again, I'm not a huge movie guy. All right. But I was looking through, there's more Indiana Jones, etc. And then the other movie that I remember seeing, um, Fury, rough film. Definitely don't let kids see that film. Uh, it's the one, it has Brad Pitt in it. And uh, that was a pretty cool portrayal too. Very rough show. Let me see if I got a picture of that. I think I got a picture. Yeah, here it is. That's him and Brad Pitt. Rough, man. You really realize that war is, is uh, it's ugly. It's real ugly. Uh, and everybody else is talking about all the other films he was in. Let me see here. We got people in the comments. Henry's saying he's in Constantine and Disturbia. Um, I, I faintly remember Constantine. I think that's an Exorcist movie. Disturbia, I didn't see. Uh, Juliana agrees with me that Holes um, was good. That's I do definitely remember that one. Uh, let's see. Anybody else got some recommendations? Yeah, everybody's everybody's digging on that show Holes. Um, I don't even remember what it's about, but I I know I've seen it at least once. Um, this is an interesting comment. This is from Jay. I don't know much. Padre Pio, pray for Shia LaBeouf and Bishop Barron to become more traditional Catholic. I know Bishop Barron has interviewed Shia, so if you want to learn more, uh, Bishop Barron is providing that. So, um, the people are saying the language is very bad. I don't know which film that is. Probably all these films. All these films have crude uh, language. But yeah, I was looking at pictures. There's a bunch of them on online. And uh, you can see some, some resemblance here in some of these photos. You know, just kind of going around. Um, I, can, I definitely get the casting here especially when you get the beard and you get the padre pedo beard you know where the beard comes off the chin right here it's the like this one right here see how padre pio's beard shapes down like that looks like shia hooked that up so here is the fox news article shia labeouf converts to catholicism after studying for padre pio movie says here that actor Shia LaBeouf said he converted to Christianity while shooting his upcoming film Padre Pio and has become a member of the Roman Catholic Church. LaBeouf revealed his conversion in an interview released Thursday with Word on Fire Catholic Ministries Bishop Robert Barron. The actor first engaged the church while living in a monastery of Franciscan Capuchin Friars in order to better understand the late mystic Saint Padre Pio whom LaBeouf portrays in the up, in an upcoming movie. Heading into the project, LaBeouf said that he was at the darkest point in his life after a series of public scandals. He was drawn to spirituality and joined a variety of faith groups to find meaning, fighting thoughts of helplessness and suicide. And I remember this. I remember he was arrested, I think, at a restaurant. And, uh, I mean, this is all, I think, in the last year, maybe even the last six months some controversy around there. He says, I had a gun on the table. I was out of here, Shia recalled in the nearly 90-minute interview. I didn't want to be alive anymore when all this happened. Shame like I had never experienced before, the kind of shame that you forget how to breathe, Shia says. You don't know where to go. You can't go outside and get like a taco. So completely overwhelmed. He says, but I was also in this deep desire to hold on. The actor described finding faith during his research by surprise, saying that his mindset going into the film was focused on his career, not God. Here's the Bishop Barron interview. 
with Shia. The reach out had happened. I was already there. I had nowhere to go. This was the last stop on the train. There was nowhere else to go in every sense. I know that God was using my ego to draw me to him, drawing me away from the worldly desires. It was all happening simultaneously, but there would have been no impetus for me to get in my car, drive up to the monastery if I didn't think, oh, I'm going to save my career. And when I got there, a switch happened. It was like three card Monty. It was like someone tripped me into it. It felt like not in a bad way, in a way I couldn't see it. I was so close to it, I couldn't see it. I see it differently now that time has passed. And then he says, I'm going to skip here. Oh, here's just a little bit of background. Last year, LaBeouf was charged with two misdemeanors, petty theft and battery after he stole a man's hat in a fight that turned physical. Just a couple months later, his ex-girlfriend and pop star FKA Twigs sued him over his alleged abusive behavior. Another ex-girlfriend was listed in the lawsuit. It was seeing other people who had sinned beyond anything I could ever conceptualize also be being found in Christ that made me feel like, oh, that gives me hope. I started hearing experiences of other depraved people who found their way in this, and it made me feel like I had permission. How beautiful. You know, we need to remember that the church is a hospital for the wounded. Sin has hurt us, marred us confused us. There are so many people, especially in this world, you know, we don't live in a Christian society. Let me say that again. We don't live in a Christian culture. You know, people don't, people nowadays mostly don't grow up in nuclear families with a mom and a dad that are married, that love each other, that praise their children, help them with their homework, take them on walks, pray with them, disciple them, teach them how to be moral, how to avoid trouble, how to be successful in business. That's a very rare thing nowadays. Kids are growing up with divorce. They're growing up with alcoholism, drug abuse, sexual abuse. I mean, you name it. Human trafficking, pornography, I mean, it's a jungle out there. And we need to remember that when people say, I'm hurting, he says he was depraved when, I, when I'm a sinner, I'm off the path. We, got, we have to have them think, oh, the Catholic Church is where I will find help, where I will find healing, where I will find other people say, Jesus has healed me. Jesus has restored me. The Holy Spirit lives in me. And I have a change in my life. There's been a, an inward transformation that now has an outward manifestation. If we aren't living that and we aren't communicating that, we are failing in our walk with Jesus Christ. We are failing as disciples. People need grace. People need the sacraments. People need kindness. We need to be those ambassadors bringing people in. Can I get an amen? Good. Hope I wasn't too preachy there. Uh, by the way, give this video a thumbs up, share it, and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. LaBeouf plays the titular character Padre Pio, a film helmed by Abel Ferrara. Let me share this with you. Abel Ferrara exploring the life of the Franciscan Capuchin mystic. And there's a very nice photo of Padre Pio at the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. This was 1950, according to the caption. For those of you watching who don't know who Padre Pio is, maybe just know who Shia LaBeouf is, and you're like, who's Padre Pio? Here's a little intro from Fox News. Padre Pio was born Francesco Forgione, in southern Italy in 1887, he became famous for showing stigmata or crucifixion wounds like those in the bodies of Christ. So Padre Pio had wounds in his hands and in his feet and in his side. 
bloody wounds like Jesus Christ and like St. Francis. One of my earliest first videos I ever did, probably about 10 years ago on YouTube, I talked about the difference between the stigmata of Padre Pio and the stigmata of Pope Francis. They were very different. For example, Francis had the formation, St. Francis of Assisi, of nails in his hand wounds. Padre Pio did not. If you want to learn more about that, just go on YouTube. After you watch this video, search my name, Taylor Marshall, and then Stigmata, Francis, Padre Pio, and you can watch that. And you'll see a very young Taylor Marshall talking about Stigmata. Padre Pio died in 1968 at the age of 81 and was beatified by Pope John Paul II in 1991 and then canonized in 2002. Ferrara previously made a short documentary on the religious figure. I want to find here the part about the Latin Mass. Okay, here's, here's uh, Shia on his baptism. He said, I didn't know I was baptized. I had been baptized earlier in my life, and I didn't even remember it. My uncle had baptized me. Lost my place here. My uncle had baptized me in the Trinitarian formula, he explained. LaBeouf told Bishop Barron that the traditional form of the Catholic Mass, celebrated in Latin, was key in both his conversion and his performance as an actor playing Padre Pio. I think this is really cool, and I, I pray, and I invite all y'all to pray as well. We love Bishop Barron, and we would love for Bishop Barron to be an apostle, to be on fire for the traditional Latin Mass and to be an advocate for the traditional Latin Mass. We want everyone to be that. So I think that'd be great. And hopefully Bishop Barron hearing Shia LaBeouf say, wow, it was the Latin Mass that brought about this conversion, this insight, this transformation. Hopefully Bishop Barron sees that, all the bishops see that, all kinds of young adults, older Catholics, they all see that and say, you know what? That's okay. That's good, and let's continue to do the new evangelization by going back to the old Mass. Wouldn't that be great? I, If you agree, give the video a thumbs up. And leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on can we restore so much of what we lost and attract people like Shia, who are had a difficult upbringing, see themselves as sort of lost in sin, and then needing a renewal. And it's not going and doing kumbaya, but it's going to the traditional Latin Mass. I mean, that's that's really why I'm making this video. And I saw that Shia LaBeouf said, you know, the Latin Mass, po portraying Padre Pio, celebrating the Latin Mass, you know, it made an impact on me. It led me to Jesus Christ inside the Catholic Church. And can can we just say that that's not only okay, but that that's beautiful and that's good? You agree? So he told Bishop Barron, the traditional form of the Catholic Mass celebrating Latin was key in both his conversion and his performance as an actor playing Padre Pio. Now, this is interesting because people are going to go see this film. I don't know if this film is going to be legit, orthodox, traditional, if they're going to take licenses, if they're going to portray Padre Pio accurately or not. So I don't even know. So please no one say Taylor Marshall once endorsed this film because I don't know. I got to see it first. Okay. That being said, when people go and watch this film and they see Padre Pio, Pio with the stigmata, Celebrating the traditional Latin Mass. This whole idea that you can't know Jesus unless you got the vernacular and the Novus Ordo and lay people all around the altar and lay people doing the lessons and lay people being Eucharistic ministers and altar girls and all that. This whole idea that you got to have all this newfangled stuff. When they watch Shia, portray Padre Pio celebrating the Latin Mass, I hope it hits a lot of people and they, you know what? Christ gave this priest the stigmata. He was so close to Christ. And Padre Pio was 
deeply in love with the Mass. Padre Pio loved the Mass a hundred thousand million times more than I do and you do. He was deeply in love with the Mass. He said, we could exist better without the Son than we could without the Latin Mass or the Mass. He loved the Mass. And I honestly think he would be horrified, just horrified, if he watched these Novus Ordo Masses, the Balloon Mass, the Clown Mass, as the Raft Mass we saw where there's a priest with his shirt off in the ocean, uh, putting the precious blood, if it's even valid, in a cup holder and a guy holding a raft. I mean, you've seen my videos on this. Padre Pio would be horrified. So I think people are going to see this film and we're going to get more in touch with the saints of old. And we're going to realize that the old traditional rites, the Latin, the Latin mass, the old sacramental rites, man, the church was firing on eight cylinders. It was going strong. Shia saw that. Let's let the world see that. When Ferreira asked LaBeouf to use an Italian accent while acting, he refused. The movie had to had become too personal and too important to wear a mask, as LaBeouf described it to Barron. While we were practicing Latin Mass, I was having genuine emotional experiences. And aside from the fact that as a Neapolitan speaker, Pio's accent wouldn't have matched Italian anyway, but it felt like that would have taken me out of this thing that felt very personal. So there it is. Um, I just think it's lovely, and I think we should pray for Shia, and we have to be reminded that, you know, sometimes our intramural debates over, and they're important, I'm not minimizing them, you know, pre-55 Holy Week, should we have the second or technically it's the third confidior in the traditional Latin Mass. Got to remember that all these rites, all these liturgies, all these sacraments are for people like Shia and me and you who have hurts, disappointments, needs, and most importantly, sins mortal and venial and we need the precious blood of jesus christ to have full remission of sins jesus christ loves you he loves shia he loves me he was born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate and was crucified humiliated so that we could be saved and we could be with God forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. That's what this is about. In eternity, there will be no Mass. Why? Because the Mass is our earthly participation in the eternal. Once we're there, we'll be face to face, fully transformed in glory. Yes, there will be an altar. We see that in the book of the Apocalypse. Yes, there will be the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. But we will be there, face to face, in the midst of the Holy Trinity, with the resurrected and glorious Jesus Christ, and the Queen of Heaven, the Mother of God, and St. Joseph, and St. John the Baptist, and the patriarchs, and the prophets, and the martyrs, and the virgins, all the way down to the person who just barely squeaked in through a thousand years of purgatory will all be there. The eternal worship of Almighty God. It's going to be fantastic. That is the point of the Catholic Church, that we might rightly worship God, that we might rightly believe about God, and that we might rightly die in Christ so that we can go and be with God. All right. That being said, pray your rosary every day. If you don't pray the rosary, you ain't on the team because Our Lady asked. And you know who would be the very first person to say, you're not on the team, you don't pray the rosary every day? Padre Pio. Man, he was talking about the rosary nonstop, and he was praying the rosary nonstop. I'd like to read you a quote 
from Padre Pio. It's in my book, The Rosary in 50 Pages. If you want to learn how to pray the rosary, you want to know the history of the rosary, the theology of the rosary, where we got the rosary, and be inspired to pray the rosary every day, and learn how to do it in English and in Latin. It's in the back of the book, the Latin and the English. This is a great little book, Rosary in 50 Pages, by yours truly. You can get it at Amazon, or you can go to patreon.com, and I'll send you a signed autographed copy. Patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. Don't miss out. Get one. All right, Padre Pio. Here's the quote. Padre Pio. Our Lady has never refused me a grace through the recitation of the rosary. Padre Pio is saying, when he, he needs something, he prays the rosary for it, and never, never has Our Lady not obtained it from Jesus Christ for him. I'm not saying Padre Pio is a liar. You shouldn't either. So that means if you need something, take it to God and the rosary. You've got the guarantee of Padre Pio on that. Here's another one from Padre Pio. The rosary is the weapon for our times. Do you believe that? I do. I believe the rosary is the weapon of our times. And that's why every single video Almost every single day when I'm on here, I'm telling you to pray the rosary. I'm just repeating Padre Pio. Here's Padre Pio again. Some people are so foolish, they think they can go through life without the help of the Blessed Mother. Love the Madonna and pray the rosary. Her rosary is the weapon against the evils of the world today. All graces given by God pass through the Blessed Mother. That's Padre Pio. One more quote from Padre Pio. All four of these quotes are in the book. And I give all kinds of great quotes to get you pumped up to pray the rosary. He says, go to the Madonna, love her, always say the rosary. Say it well. Say it as often as you can. Be souls of prayer. Never tire of praying. It is what is essential. Prayer shakes the heart of God. It obtains necessary graces. Padre Pio, pray for us. How beautiful. All right, well, we will close. We'll pray a Hail Mary together, and we're going to pray it for Shia and for everyone who's hurting, everyone who's Jesus. Oremos. Nomine Patris et Fidi et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or prenobis peccatoribus, Nunc et or mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filio, Spiritui Sancto, Sicuterat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Nomini Patri et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. I know I pray the I pray uh, the Hail Mary and the Our Father and the Glory Be in Latin all the time. You can get all those prayers in this book, Rosary in Fifty Pages, or for free and with slow pronunciation. People say, you got to go fast, Taylor. That's just because I'm praying. If you want me to go slow and pronounce every word and to teach you how to pray the rosary in Latin, I have a whole course for free, cost you nothing. I just want you to pray the rosary. And if you want to pray it in English or in Latin or in Spanish, I have a whole course it's on youtube right here on youtube go on youtube and type in the word rosary and my name taylor marshall and you will find a playlist of me going through the rosary teaching you how teaching about the rosary but teaching you how to pray the rosary so again go into youtube type rosary and then my name dr taylor marshall enter boom you'll see a playlist follow that playlist and I'll walk you through it. All right, so pray your rosary every day, read your Bible every day, find a traditional Latin Mass, experience what Shia experienced. Find a traditional Latin Mass, make the great Catholic migration. If you live in an area, you're like, man, I wish I had solid Catholics, a solid Catholic school, solid Catholic priest, a Latin Mass, get my kids baptized, traditional Roman rite. I wish I had the full thing. If you don't have it, you might have to move. You might have to make the great Catholic migration. And if you want to do that, I recommend contacting realestateforlife.org. They have helped already 
so many people sell their home and buy a home somewhere else, like where I live, Texas. So go to realestateforlife.org. Tell them Taylor Marshall sent you. They'll help you out. If you want to sell your house and move somewhere else and find a traditional Latin mass, they're there to help you, realestateforlife.org. And uh, like I said, say you heard about it here. I appreciate it. All right. There's not much more to say. Congratulations to Shia. Welcome to our family, the Catholic Church. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. And why don't you invite one person to Mass this weekend? Do it. One person. After this video is over, get your phone and text one person. Hey, you should come to Mass with me this Sunday. 